In this unit, we're going to study some of the fundamental ideas in calculus, in particular limits and continuity, which will be springboards for our study and introduction of the derivative. In the last unit, we looked at a range of families of functions and all the differences between them. In this unit, we're going to look at some of the common features that they all share. In particular, let's look at a maybe less traditional example of the statement, you were exactly once one meter tall. Think about that for a moment and ask yourself, is that true or false? Was I ever exactly, to as many decimal places as you like, one meter tall? All right, I'm going to claim the answer is true, it is yes. Now, how can I say that so convincingly? How about, I don't know how fast you grew, how fast I grew. We're going to rely on some of those properties of continuity that we just introduced. In particular, we can get an intuitive idea by sketching a graph of our height over time. Now, let's say up here is two meters, here is zero. I think most of us were probably born somewhere around here-ish in terms of height slash length. And whatever your height might be today in this range, let's say we're a little under two meters, that's our time frame. So this is time, here's now, and this is birth. And this is our height. On that scale, regardless of how you grew, maybe you didn't grow much at all at first, and then you had a growth spurt, and then another growth spurt, and then got to your current height today. Or maybe you grew quickly, and then plateaued later on, and then grew and had a growth spurt at like eight <laughs> to your final height. What do those have in common? Well, all of those graphs, let's say that's one meter here, all of those graphs cross the one meter line at some point. And so we might not be able to say exactly when for you, you reached one meter in height. What we can say is that there was a time, it might have just been a second as you were in the midst of a growth spurt, but there was a time where you had to be exactly one meter tall. And what we're relying on here is the fact that your height over time is continuous. The only way for you to have started off where you did start and ended up where you are today and not have crossed the one meter line would have been if you had grown, somehow jumped in height and crossed that one meter gap instantly or had a jump and one second you were below one meter, the next second you were above one meter and that's just not the way heights are going to work because they have to be continuous. We always are the products of where we were before and on the direction of where we're going now. So what we're going to be looking at in this unit at first is this idea of continuity and some of the consequences of it. All right, so I hope I've convinced you that at some point in your career, some point in your life, you were exactly one meter tall. Let's see if we can generalize that a bit. There is a statement theorem called the Intermediate Value Theorem, and it encapsulates exactly what we uh, used in our analysis in that last example. So here we're going to suppose that we have a function that's continuous. All right, so that's our starting place. And we're going to introduce that idea of continuity right away. And that it's continuous on a closed interval. So it doesn't have to be continuous everywhere, but at least it's closed on some interval between A and B, two numbers here. Now, this looks very abstract, but we'll walk you through it. If K is any number between F of A and F of B, so notice that this is a, what we'd call a Y value or an output, not an input, then there's at least one number C in AB, so this is an X value, such that when we use the input C we get the output k. So what does that look like? Again, we'll just add some scales here. So the function is continuous between a and b. So in other words, whatever the value is here, 
that would be f of a. We plug a into our function, we get f of a. Whatever the function value is at b, we plug b into our function, we get f of b. k is any number between f and b. So what we have on this side, we could actually write it out as f of b and f of a here. And then k is any number you want to pick in between here. For illustration, I'll just pick this number, this value here. The intermediate value theorem says, all right, if the function's continuous from a to b, then somewhere along the way, we must cross this horizontal line. We cannot get from here to here if we're continuous without eventually, event yeah, I gotta cross. If I'm gonna get from here to here, I've gotta cross that line. And that would make our point here, the C value. I might not know in advance where that crossing is. Let me just erase for a moment this graph. I don't know in advance where the crossing will be. I don't know in advance whether there's more than one crossing. The graph might go like this, change multiple times like a sine graph. But there will be at least one, there will be at least one point, like the one we illustrated here, where there has to be a crossing of this intermediate y value if we're going to draw f as a continuous function. And just a reminder, how do we usually interpret continuous functions? This is almost a, something you use as a test, but a more typical characterization is that if a function is continuous, it can be drawn in one pen stroke or without lifting your pen. That's going to be our more uh, traditional or intuitive idea of a continuous function or definition of, an, of a continuous function. One of the consequences, though, is this intermediate value theorem. And we can see here the, the connection back to the previous example. In our previous example, our A value was our birth, our B value is today. And we said, well, our, if our growth is continuous, and we believe it would be, then at some point we have to hit every point in between our birth height and our current height. We have to have some time where we'd cross any particular height in between. So continuity is a fairly nice idea. We're going to see some connections and uh, reasoning that we can do with it in a second. So what are some kinds of functions that we can imagine that are continuous? We're going to be looking for some properties, but we want to find the families that might belong to that. So I think for most people, it's pretty clear that polynomials are continuous. Exponentials, we can draw those with one stroke of the pen. What else have we got? Uh, we've got sine and cosine. Definitely can draw them with one continuous pen stroke. There are some functions that we've seen, though, that aren't continuous, at least not everywhere. So one would be x to the 1 half or root x. The problem there, of course, is that it's not defined at all for x less than 0. So it would be continuous for x greater than 0. We can say that. Just to introduce a short form here, CNS is often a for short form I'll use for continuous. So square root of x is continuous once we draw it, of course, on the range uh, x greater than zero, but over here, there's nothing going on at all, so it can't be termed continuous there. What about something like x to the one-third? Well, that, in fact, is continuous everywhere. Remember, that's the cube root function, and cube roots, we can take the cube root of negative numbers with no problem. That's our sideways cubic, and it would be continuous everywhere. All right. Other functions that might not be continuous everywhere, a very important class of them, are the rational functions. Just as a simple example, if we have 1 over x, we know the graph for that has an asymptote, a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Looks like this. And that function would not be continuous at 0.
because we can't we can it takes two pen strokes to draw it just as I drew it here the top stroke and the bottom stroke there uh, other functions that would have discontinuities would be something like tan of x uh, we know that has the asymptotes every once in a while classic arches like this and while we will review trig functions a little later I hope you remember in radians where all these breakpoints are the period of tan is pi and the roots of it are at 0 pi, 2 pi and so on and the asymptotes are at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and so on um, other functions that of course could have discontinuities would be piecewise functions remember those are the ones which you write out on different intervals and of course when you switch between intervals there's a risk of having a discontinuity there all right having considered all those examples just ask yourself for a moment is the function y equal to the absolute value of x continuous at x equals zero or not okay let's take a look best evidence is to be able to sketch it and we've sketched it before it's the line that goes down like this and then back up like this and of course that can be drawn as one continuous pen stroke so very definitely that function is continuous there is something to be said about this cusp or this transition point at zero but it's not a thing or it's not a property of continuity or a problem of continuity so yes y equals the absolute value of x is continuous at x equals zero it doesn't have an asymptote like these other examples and that's the basic introduction to continuity as an idea